You've not been cleaning the radiator out of the Merlot, Rob? Uh, every day. Hmm. Someone hasn't. It's like carpet in it. That's a problem with wood chip. Dead fibrous. Getting there with the sockets, we found Morgan had one on the gun, and then there was two in the chipper box, despite Rob saying he'd not had them. But he'd be working on the chipper. There's still a 41 missing. Now that's a big size, that I think that's been used to push a bearing on or something. You can't find it. It's in here somewhere. Possibly on the floor, where everything else is. You're off to nursery and your major top, your little tractor on it. I'm just on a Zoom meet in the kitchen with Red Tractor. Some fertilizer's being delivered now. That was actually a relatively quick Zoom meeting with Red Tractor. First load of fertilizer's been. The guy thinks going backwards and forwards. He's only going backwards and forwards across the river. So we've now got some white bags in the shed. This stuff we've got to spread before a certain date. There's another load on the way. Hopefully that will come to around here and then we'll take the other one to where we were sorting that roof yesterday or want to sort that roof get it in the back corner for now there's a local stockist that we're just waiting on a call back to see if we've got the sheets in it's dry just at the moment but every sort of 20 minutes it's absolutely chucking it down it isn't the weather for fixing roofs lads have been in the workshop trying to find tools and tidy up a bit while it's been absolutely chucking it down we can see a bit of the floor let's get in there Must be dinner time, that other load of fertilizer's just turned up. Oh! While I was on my Zoom meeting, Rob unloaded that load and he wasn't using them pallet forks, he was using the new set and they're like razor sharp. And one of the bags slipped down and it cut the loop off the top. Anyway, the wagon driver's come across this problem before, so he made us a new lifting loop. Anyway, it's just on a pallet now, just to keep it out of the way. So, I don't know. I could unload with the bag lifter, which is really good on curtain siders, but it's a bit harder to see than just the pallet forks, because obviously the Merlot's designed so you can see the pallet forks. So I think I'll just unload them with them ones, because they're not sharp, like the other ones are. And I can see a little bit better what I'm doing. But it's a nightmare unloading curtain siders with fertiliser on with pallet forks because that sort of frame, this frame here, wants to hit the roof of the curtain cider before the bags have took off the floor. Anyway, I'll move this out of the way and swap back. At around 250 a bag. We do with everyone going buying some merch. We do with selling 3,000 hoodies maybe to pay for it. So if you're all looking for Christmas presents, go buy a hoodie. I'm just measuring this gate because it got modified the other day when they came out with the low loader. And if we've got a longer one, we're going to move that post and pull out that hedge stock because it's too difficult to turn in with anything big at the moment. We keep hitting these trees here, so yeah, we'll have to make the gap a bit wider, I think. There's a mountain of rubbish at the back of the yard at Brookhouse. Bits of logs, soil, bits of scrap and everything. So Frank's here with the digger, gonna tidy it all up. Tidy it up round the pond. And he's found. <laughs> One of Ian's scrap pumas, but... Found a sledgehammer. Not even broken as well. Perfect condition. Is that what they, in the, is it song in it? Pulp song, wood chip on the wall. It's on the ceiling, isn't it? Wood chip wallpaper. <laughs> Bathroom early on. This one's all stripped off as well. That's where the ceiling was bad because the chimney was leaking, the roof was leaking. Andrew's brought a few more planes up around there. We've got the whacker with us. Morgan's just unloading the digger now. We'll get in and tidy up and get it a bit neater. The yard needs a bit of scraping off. It's got like a film of muck on the top of it. 
Now this hollow in the yard, is it a grid or is it just something to twist our handles on? I think that's a grid. Time I walk across the yard, keep tripping over. It's a grid, it's not working anyway, is it? No. There's green light on. You should have the beacons on. Hey, oh, fan belt needs tightening. He's gonna get in that corner now and pull that a bit, bit squarer because it's got a bit of a kick to it, and I think it'll make the bags want to fall over. Roof's still not fixed, but if we get two rows with one on top, we'll fit the old wagon full here, and then it'll be all right. Right, we just trimmed the hedge back here, got along the gate, took the bent one off, get some concrete mixed round there, we got that on the back of the buggy, and then make it a lot easier this for getting in with grain trailers and the combine as well. Looks good to me. <laughs> Rob's supporting the agri wear there as well. <laughs> no, but people need to buy them to pay for that fertiliser, it's just arrived. Big job on now. We got some gravel and sand. Morgan's going to tip it out here, mix the semi dry mix. Hold on, where the hell do it? You know, it's going to tip it? Yeah. We've got a plastic shovel, lightweight. Coming to dry mix now and scoop it in the hole. That's a bit of fibre in this concrete. <laughs> Hold on! Right. Put that back, back in the back. Let's sit the box back down first. I've had to shoot back the main yard. I've left them doing the putting the gate post in. Andrew's unloading the other wagon. There's a few in here, green bags and white bags. It's really gonna annoy me looking at that all year. I know it's good I've got it because it's talking of short supply because for some reason, the UK can't make it stack up to have their own fertilizer plants, mainly because we sold them off to the Americans and now we don't have a proper UK supply. So this is imported urea. It actually comes in locally to us, actually into the docks up the River Mersey. So anyway, that's all here now. Unfortunately, we've got to pay for it. So we've got to pay for it in the next 28 days. And I won't use some of that, especially the stuff at the back. It's been here a lot longer till probably next April, May time. And then I won't see a return on it till I've harvested that crop next harvest and sold it probably February. So, so this is like a, a nearly a two year or at least an 18 month investment. And it was dear. It's come down a slight bit, but I paid £450 a tonne for that because I ordered it a while back to make sure I got it. I think it dropped, it went up a bit, then it dropped to about 430 then I think it's around that again now. But yeah, it's going to be annoying walking past it all year, knowing, knowing what it cost. But at least I've got it. But I don't know, sometimes I just look at farming and think, what are we doing? Anyway, it's going to be a short video today because I've got to get to Staffordshire County Showground to a talk for, I think, the, the, some, the Plough Society, but they've not had a plowing match this year because it was too wet. There is a plowing match, however, next week, Cheshire plowing match. The combine's going to be there. There's a chance that the, it's not here actually, is it? The orange Valter might be there as well because John Bowles might have it on their stand or use it for a demo plot. I'm not sure yet, but there was a little bit of talk about that when we were buying it, whether they'd need it or not. So anyway, I'm going to quickly go and do the birthdays. This arrived yesterday, but I needed an adapter and I was going to show you how it worked, but it might be a job for tomorrow now. The microphones were little fluffy. They, call, they actually call them a dead cat on them. And the idea is they stop the wind noise. So the other day when I was at the turf show, the guy from Machinery Nation had one. That's the receiver. So you plug that in, but you needed an adapter, which is this gray lead here, which I've now got. That'll plug into there, that'll plug into that. And then that way then, in fact, should we try it now? No, I haven't got time. I've got to get it changed in a sec. But yeah, that'll plug in and you'll end up with hopefully less wind noise. And if you wanted to talk with two people, you can plug two in as well. 
So the only thing is they're a bit big for carrying around. They do come with a handy pencil case. And you've obviously got to charge them. But I might I might keep them in the buggy because often when I go looking at fields and it's windy, I'm in the buggy. And then that way I've got them so you can stop the wind noise. Or if I go to a show or something, I can take them with me then. You can even get a little stick that they click on. And that's what we use when we're filming with NFU, with Sophie doing them um, questions in the sheds. And you can you know, like point it at people. So yeah, I'll try have a play with them tomorrow. Yesterday apparently was the first time that someone rewinded the birthday bumper to rewatch it because of the funny names on it. Now, is there any today? Poppy Summer is 11. Rolf Inge, I think it is. That's uh, Canadian dollars. Uh, sorry, that was in dollars, so that's someone from abroad. Might have been Australia. It's 43. Sean Omaha, Omahani, Mahani, I don't know. Sorry. Neil Buchanan, Oakley Aces 2. Carl Hannah is 52. Tom's on there. Don't know it's his birthday, but he just said well done for the efforts on raising the money, which is £46,608. Billy McGaw is eight. John Morris is on there. Dan Giebels is on there. Jack Gibbs and Lee Johnston. So happy birthday, everyone on there and anyone else whose birthday is. And is there any today that are people taking the mic? Probably not, I don't know. I didn't notice any. You know how I said yesterday things were drying up nicely? Well, we've had 10 mil of rain today and we've had 35 mil in the last seven days now. So it's going to take quite a bit of drying up. Fingers crossed it will next week and we can get some drilling because we still have not drilled any wheat left. And obviously the fertiliser is now sat there waiting for it as well. Good news is the OSR that we re-drilled had started to show two days ago. I haven't been to the field yet, but I'll go and have a look tomorrow and see. Hopefully the flea beetle's not eating that because they've probably drowned. Anyway, that is all for today's video. It was a bit scattered. Most of the morning was took up in a red track to me on Zoom. It's been wet. The lads have been in the workshop. We've been trying to do bits and bobs. The house is taking shape. The shed's taking shape. The new gateway's better there because we were struggling getting in. Like I said, they caught it with the low loader the other day. It got caught with a straw trailer in the summer as well. But yeah, that's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.